Los Alamos with, at Ashley Pine with Thomas and we just ended a hunger strike or rather we're continuing a hunger strike and you're going to continue it. We're, we're tag teaming the hunger strike now, yeah Alaric's been for Alaric and others um, fasted since July 16th so through until August 9th. I think that's What's this hunger strike years. for or against? Um, an organization came together or a group of Occupy people and other organizations came together earlier in the year to uh, create a working group and specifically look at the issue of nuclear weapons and then by extension nuclear power as well. And we planned for a weekend of events that just happened last weekend um, over August 3rd to 6th, August 6th being Hiroshima Day. Uh, Alaric came to us early on and said that um, from his own personal history, having grown up in Los Alamos with a father who uh, worked at the labs, he wanted to do something um, very personally to, to bring attention to this issue and so he committed to a hunger strike uh, and he was the inspiration really. Um, about 30 other people joined him on the hunger strike for various periods of times and he had a, he had a list of demands uh, including wanting to meet with our congressional representatives and the director of the lab Charles McMillan in order to um, have a conversation, put forward an alternative view for how the labs could be used. So, um, we're here on Nagasaki Day. So, what's the symbolism of, of being here 67 years after the, the bombing of Nagasaki? Well, I think that um, as, as our global community and as our activist community grows in consciousness, um, arising out of the Occupy movement had a huge amount to do with that, then um, although the years are passing and it's 67 years since Japan was bombed, the awareness of it is, is maintaining. Obviously the awareness in Japan of it is huge. They have massive important ceremonies ev there every year. And for the last 10 or 12 years there have been activities happening here in Los Alamos um, each year to commemorate what happened. This year we had a bigger event, we had lots of speakers coming from around the country, um, and then there were lots and lots of other actions happening around the world actually um, on Hirosh Hiroshima Day um, to protest against firstly nuclear weapons, this insanity of nuclear weapons, but also the insanity of nuclear power. And coming just almost 18 months after Fukushima, that's very important too. Um, today was also interesting, Alaric broke his fast here in Los Alamos. Um, at our protests here outside the lab on Monday, six people were arrested and they were arraigned in court today and so we were here to stand in solidarity with those six. What's the connection between the Occupy movement and nuclear weapons? Why, why are Occupy as opposed to, to nukes? Well, it, it depends it, a are little... Nukes, uh, like connected to the 1% or something? I think it depends a little bit on how you perceive the Occupy movement. I think um, there are many things... This is now yours. Hunger Strike Day 25. Fill him, fill him with that. <laughs> we need more numbers. Um, there are, I would say, three broad areas of issues around nuclear weapons. The first is just the moral question of, of why are we producing such things? Why are we stockpiling weapons that can kill hundreds of thousands of people? Um, the second question is around pollution and the environment and health consequences that come out of the production of nuclear weapons and also nuclear power. And I think, depending on how you perceive the Occupy movement, the Occupy movement can get engaged with both of those issues. Um, but then most clearly is the economics. Um, a huge, vast, unbelievable amount of money is spent on nuclear weapons each year in this country alone. Um, it, it runs into billions and billions of dollars. The Los Alamos National Laboratory alone is just one-eighth of the nuclear weapons industry in this country, receives about two and a half billion dollars a year. Um, about two-thirds of that between 1.5 and 1.6 billion dollars a year goes directly to nuclear weapons. All of that money, every single cent of that money is federal taxpayers' money. We, the 99%, are paying for the production of nuclear weapons in this country. On top of that, um, from the onset of the Manhattan Project until 2005-2006, the, the Los Alamos National Laboratory was run by the University of California, for which they received a fee um, for operating. It's, it's called it's GOCO, 
government owned, corporate operated. Um, and that was the University of California for many, many years. Following some mainly security incidents, um, but also just the ongoing trajectory of the privatization of so much of um, what should be held as common responsibility, the operation of the lab was put out to tender and the lab is now run by a limited liability corporation uh, called Los Alamos National Security. The main partner in that organization is Bechtel, the biggest engineering firm in the world. For the privilege of operating the lab, they receive about $80 million a year as payment. That payment is pure profit. There is no overheads that they have to pay, no salaries that they have to pay. All that is already taken care of. So I think when we look at the billions of dollars that are spent on nuclear weapons, the billions of dollars that are spent um, running these labs, or the eight labs around the country, and then the $80 million that is given every year in pure profit to a private corporation to run the labs, then it becomes very much uh, an Occupy issue and a 99% issue. Finally, um, Alec was talking about a revolution in consciousness that he hopes the hunger strike will inspire. Do you also subscribe to that goal? I do. I, th I think that, I mean, I, I personally believe that the Occupy movement is also part of this um, evolution in consciousness or, or growing consciousness where we see that we're all part of this. We're all in this together, humans of all races and communities and countries and actually all of life on the planet. Um, and that we have to solve this together. And that, you know, we, we are not going to get rid of Los Alamos National Laboratory just like that. And I don't know whether we should. There's a lot of work to be done in cleanup and remediation of the land here, of the dismantling of the weapons, of the land around all the other nuclear weapons labs and nuclear power stations around the country. And the scientists who've been working on these nuclear weapons, they have the expertise to know how to dismantle them. Hopefully, they have the expertise to know how to clean up after themselves as well. Though there are also other people um, coming into that field who can, I think, can add to the conversation. So we hope that Los Alamos National Laboratory, for one, can be turned towards um, cleanup and remediation on the one hand, dealing with what we've created in the past and taking responsibility for that, and then forward-looking, looking at life-affirming sciences, looking at environmental sciences, looking at sustainable energies and so on. And instead of spending two and a half billion dollars a year on weapons that can destroy the world, let's spend it on science that can uplift and uh, help us manage into the future. What can people do if they want more information or they want to support you? Is there a website? Uh, the, the, the first website to go to is nukefreenow.org. Um, we're going to add onto that website very shortly information about the hunger strike and how you can join the hunger strike. We are now, from now on, we're going to have one person at least hunger striking every single day until the USA disarms. If you would like to join that effort and just wherever you are in the world, wherever you, whatever you're doing in the world, you can, you can strike, hunger strike just for one day and be part of this effort. And as more and more of us do that, then the call will get louder and louder and louder. And I think that consciousness will shift and, and the government will start having to look at these questions of why we're building nuclear weapons. So check out nukefreenow.org. Um, very soon we'll have a page up there that will um, interactively enable you to join the hunger strike and we hope that many thousands and millions of people around the world will do that. Thank you so much, Thomas. Very inspiring what you're doing. Nukefreenow.org, also occupynewmex.org. Occupy we'll continue covering this effort. Thanks, Ethan.